Okay, today let, let's talk a little about today about cinnamon. Cinnamon is one of the more popular spices. Everybody likes it. It tastes pretty good. It's got a couple of uh, excellent health effects that we, that I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, so, okay, cinnamon. The main use of cinnamon. The main reason why people take cinnamon is because it's uh, supposedly helps control blood glucose. I'll talk about that a little bit later. The other uh, factors, uh, the other health effects of cinnamon include it might help protect against cardiovascular disease and help reduce inflammation. Cinnamon itself is a spice obtained from a type of bark, inner bark of certain trees. Uh, it, it was always uh, considered a valuable spice in ancient times, dating back as far as ancient Egypt. Uh, it used to be, uh, it was considered as valuable as money, like salt. The word salary is taken from salt because salt at one time was considered as valuable as money in ancient times and, and salt and cinnamon were often uh, offered as gifts for royalty, gifts for kings. Uh, th there's two types of cinnamon, Ceylon cinnamon, which is called true cinnamon, and they have cassia cinnamon. Most supplements that you find online or in stores are cassia cinnamon. There is a problem with cassia cinnamon, which I'll get to later in this video. One of the advantages, uh, one of the health effects of cinnamon uh, is that it um, is that it has it has polyphenol compounds in there which protect the body they act as antioxidants they protect it against the damage caused by free radicals free radicals are unpaired electrons uh, as they result from oxygen metabolism your body's always producing it the free radicals tend to tax attack cell membranes and other tissues uh, at one time aging was thought to be caused by free radicals now they know that it's only a small part of the aging process, but cinnamon does provide polyphenol compounds, which are powerful antioxidants. Uh, they also have, uh, cinnamon provides anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, a, a certain amount of inflammation, for example, if you injure yourself, uh, the uh, localized inflammation draws uh, white blood cells and healing factors to the injury, helps you heal, but uncontrolled inflammation, such as systemic inflammation, which you can't feel causes a lot of damage. It's associated with various degenerative diseases, such as uh, brain disease, uh, Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, cardiovascular cancer, and aging itself. Studies show that cinnamon has anti-inflammatory. It's been shown in studies to, to lower a uh, marker of inflammation in the body called C-reactive protein. Uh, some studies show that cinnamon can protect against cardiovascular disease. One review showed that supplementing with 1.5 grams, which is about three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon, was able to reduce levels of triglyceride, total cholesterol, low density lipoprotein, and blood glucose in people who had metabolic disease. Another review of 13 studies found that cinnamon could reduce triglyceride, which are fats circulating in the blood, and also total cholesterol levels, both of which are risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Uh, a a two-month study showed that cinnamon was able to reduce blood pressure, which also is a cardiovascular, elevated blood pressure, is a cardiovascular risk uh, factor. Uh, probably the most famous function of, uh, of cinnamon is it improves insulin sensitivity. Uh, um, a lot of people have insulin resistance, which I talked about in a past video. Uh, there's some research showing that taking uh, insulin at doses uh, ra that range from three to six grams a day can reduce insulin resistance uh, and also help lower blood glucose levels, which in turn will help prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, uh, uh, cinnamon is very good for lowering blood glucose. Uh, it seems to uh, make uh, one of the reasons, one of the ways it does that is it interferes with certain digestive enzymes that digest carbohydrates, such as uh, disaccharides and, uh, and uh, amylase. This, this lowers the absorption of carbohydrates. With, with, with slower absorption of carbohydrates, you get less release of insulin. And uh, you want to have as, uh, the least amount of insulin released as possible because excess insulin is associated with greater fat accretion and other health problems. So in that respect, uh, cinnamon might w make insulin work better. Uh, the main active compound in cinnamon is called cinnama, cinnama, cinnamon malda, cinnamaldehyde. It's called a little hard to pronounce, but some studies have shown that cinnamon 
It can lower fasting blood in, uh, I'm sorry, lower fasting blood glucose levels and improve a long-term marker of glucose control, uh, blood glucose control called hemoglobin A1C. So it can also have, uh, cinnamon can also help with various neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, uh, certain compounds can uh, seem to increase, or I'm sorry, inhibit the buildup of a protein called tau. Now, Alzheimer's disease is marked by the accumulation of abnormal proteins in the brain. One of them is called beta amyloid. The other one is called tau. Beta amyloid causes plaques to develop in the brain. Tau causes what they call neurofibrillary tangles. And uh, cinnamon, uh, c- cinnamon seems to inhibit the, uh, t- the accumulation of tau in the brain, abnormal tau, which would help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Uh, a, a mouse study from 2014 showed that giving the mice cinnamon seemed to protect neurons uh, when the mice ha- uh, had, again, had, um, had, had Parkinson's disease. Uh, they don't know if it happens in humans. Some studies show that cinnamon might be of use in uh, helping to protect uh, against cancer because tumor cells are able to block a process called apoptosis, which involves a self-destruction of cells. Uh, normally, cells can detect abnormalities, and once they do, it's, it sets off an automatic program where the cell basically blows up, it destroys itself. Tumor cells produce their own insulin-like growth factor, which blocks apoptosis. But when you take cinnamon, it seems to increase the apoptosis in tumor cells, which would help destroy uh, the tumor cells. Also, cinnamon helps prevent a process called metastasis, which is the spread of tumor cells throughout the body if you, dete- if you detect a cancer in its original site, that's called in situ. Most cancers have about a 90% chan- uh, cure, uh, uh, chance of being cured if they're discovered early in their original site. Once the tumors have spread or metastasized, it reverses. Now you only have about a 10% chance because it's much harder for the chemotherapy or radiation therapy to kill the uh, tumors once they've spread throughout the body. Cinnamon may help prevent the spread of cancer by uh, inhibiting uh, substances produced by tumors that promote the growth of new blood vessels, and tumor cells need to sprout new blood vessels in order to spread. Uh, again, the active ingredient there is cinnamaldehyde. That's the, uh, that's the main ingredient of cinnamon that provides all the uh, health benefits. Other, cinnamaldehyde also uh, seems to protect against various types of infection. Uh, in vitro, a test tube study showed that cinnamon oil could kill certain types of yeast that cause resp- respiratory tract infections. It can also kill certain types of bacteria, such as listeria and salmonella, both associated with, with what's called food poisoning. Uh, cinnamon also destroys the type of bacteria that causes tooth decay and bad breath. Uh, most of these come from in vitro or test tube studies, but it doesn't mean it does, doesn't occur in the human body. There, uh, cinnamon provides a couple of antivirus properties. Uh, uh, cinnamon is thought to be beneficial against human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, which causes AIDS. Uh, I'm not saying cinnamon can, cu- can cure AIDS, but it, it might help to treat AIDS. If you already have it, it might work with the current drugs so that the AIDS d- disease doesn't kill you. There's uh, cinnamon can also protect against other viruses, including the flu and dengue, which is a t- dengue, which is a viral infection caused by mosquitoes, mainly in Africa. The best type of uh, cinnamon, if you want to try it, is is called Ceylon cinnamon. The problem with cassia, which is the more common type of uh, supplemental cinnamon, is that it contains significant amounts of a substance called coumarin. Coumarin is also prescribed as a blood thinner. Uh, people that had uh, years ago that had clotting problems were prescribed coumarin. Uh, I believe it's also called warfarin as a uh, anti-blood clotting, but uh, if you take in too much coumarin, like for example, if you were to overeat cassia cinnamon, you're getting too much coumarin, which can cause clotting problems. That can cause hemorrhaging. It's uh, The Ceylon uh, cinnamon, also called true cinnamon, is preferable because it has has only trace amounts of coumarin, not enough to cause any problems. So um, I think that's about it for cinnamon. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is the third time I've done this video. Uh, I, I'm almost out of breath because I've done this now three times in a row because this damn video keeps you know checking out on me. 
So hopefully this one went through. So that's what I'll say about cinnamon. You know, if you're having any blood glucose problems, you might want to try it. My own personal experience with cinnamon, I should also mention there's another type of supplemental cinnamon called, uh, it's a water-soluble cinnamon. Uh, it's a kind of an extract of cinnamon that's water-soluble, supposedly easier to absorb, works a little bit faster. I tried it. I didn't notice any difference between the much higher priced water-soluble version and the normal Ceylon cinnamon. Uh, I prefer to use the Ceylon cinnamon. I, I'm taking six grams a day. Not so much because of the blood glucose because I don't think that the effect of cinnamon on blood glucose is very potent. I think it's very weak. Very weak. It has a, a, a compared to uh, other supplements like berberine and other supplements, I think uh, cinnamon has a very weak effect on helping to control, control blood glucose. But I think it's uh, effect on possibly reducing tau buildup in the brain and also its effect on lowering cardiac risk factors makes it worthwhile to take as a supplement and that's why I take it. So if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research you can use today, supplement science, which ones work, which ones don't, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy including testosterone therapy, uh, what else, um, women's health and fitness. M I cover more topics in applied metabolics than any other digital publication that I know of. It's 30 to 50 pages every month. It comes out on the first of the month. No ads, no BS, just pure evidence-based information. It's not expensive at all, 33 cents a day. You know, as I said in my last video, I drop, I often lose two quarters out of my pocket. That's 50 cents. I lose 50 cents a day. I, I don't know, if you can't afford 33 cents a day for something that could improve your health, improve your training, and possibly even help you live longer, I don't know what to say. What could I say? What could be more valuable than that? I wish I had applied metabolics when I was a competitive bodybuilder. It would have saved me from a lot of the mistakes I made, and it would have saved me a lot of time. But anyway, so subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, uh, you, you can uh, if you want, send me an email, and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page. Where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general health. That's only for subscribers. I also answer questions on the Facebook page. Uh, I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only. I don't accept unsolicited questions. You can ask me short questions, anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics, or anything that comes to mind about nutrition or exercise. I'll answer that as a service and as a bonus to their subscription. Uh, obviously, that's limited to only current subscribers. Uh, if you just send me emails, uh, the odds of me answering it, I honestly, are very slim because I just don't have time. I only have a limited amount of time, and that time is going to go to the people that are supporting my work. So, uh, you know, I very often, uh, almost every other day, I get uh, emails, people who see my videos, and they want to ask me questions that have nothing to do with the video. In other words, they saw my video, and they ask me questions about a topic completely unrelated to the video. Uh, I, again, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be nasty, but, you know, I don't have time for that. Uh, you know, if you're a subscriber, I'll answer it because, again, you're helping me, I'm helping you. You know, that's, uh, I forgot the term for that. But anyway, uh, that's the way it works. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, what else can I say? Um, if you like my videos, please subscribe to the channel. Now, that doesn't cost anything. And when you subscribe, I think the way it works is you'll you'll get a uh, an email put telling you every time I post a new video. But I always post a new video every Tuesday, actually early Monday morning. So even if you don't get the uh, email, you'll know that there's a new video posted every Tuesday. Uh, and that's uh, once a week, every week, hopefully. And uh, what else can I say? That's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, uh, <laughs> I hope this video went through. The last two versions, nothing happened. I don't know what's going on here. But anyway, take care. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I know why my video... It's because I had the vaccine. That's what it is. It's the vaccine. I had the vaccine, and it caused my videos not to go through. Ah, problem solved. Take care.